folks today. Good. 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 I'm Brother Moulton from the Somerset Ward, and it's nice to have you here this morning. We're going to talk about Dutch ovens. How many of you have cooked with Dutch ovens before? Good. Well, then, then we'll uh, ask you for a little feedback as well. Hello. Hello. How are you? She must be out. She's making sure the kids get back to Boise. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got that long journey today. <clears throat> well, Dutch ovens are a fun way to cook. <coughs> and when it comes to some of the other <coughs> modes of cooking we see today, this will seem like a piece of cake. Because uh, solar ovens take a little time. You're limited what you can cook. Uh, the capacity to cook large meals are somewhat limited in the other stations. But Dutch ovens, depending on what you have, you can cook a meal for a, a, you know, a little tribe. We had eight people at the house on Sunday. We cooked it all in Dutch ovens. And the advantage you have in doing so is you can take multiple ovens and stack them on top of one another and cook an entire meal. So we did everything from appetizer to dessert to the, to the dinner rolls cooked in the Dutch ovens. And the important thing to remember about Dutch ovens is if you can cook it in your oven at home, you can cook in a Dutch oven. So when it comes to recipes, don't limit yourself to a lot of the very basic recipes you see in Dutch oven uh, cookbooks. You can just take those cookbooks off the shelf, look at what you would do in your oven, and say, I'm going to do it in my Dutch oven. So very, very flexible. So let's talk about some of the basics that you may or may not be aware of. When it comes to purchasing a Dutch oven, you can buy two different types on the market today, pre-seasoned and those that are not seasoned. The already seasoned ovens, which Lodge sells, which by the way, Lodge is by far the best brand of Dutch oven out there. And the reason for that is that they have a very tight fitting lid. The dimensions on them are exact such that everything seals in a Lodge oven. There are a lot of Chinese ovens on the market today. You can go into department stores, Army, Navy stores, and buy the Chinese ovens. You have to be very careful because in most cases, the lids do not seal. There was a particular store in Utah, an Army, Navy store. They loved to advertise their inexpensive Dutch ovens. But you'd walk in there and you'd look at that table and look at all the lids and they were all skew humpy, nothing set tight. And what is the advantage of a tight fitting lid on a Dutch oven? keeps the heat in there because what you have cooking with a Dutch oven is not only the direct heat but it generates steam within and that's what cooks inside the oven. So if that lid is open that heat of that, uh, escapes and the steam escapes. So if you buy an oven that is not seasoned obviously you have to season it. A lot of people get a little nervous when they think about what am I going to do to season my oven. Well years ago folks would season them inside their house and what does it smell like in the house when you're seasoning an oven? Pretty nasty. <laughs> because you've got that oil on there that's going to just heat up and really make a nasty smell in the house. So before you even get to that point, you're going to purchase this oven that has been cast in a factory and the molds are, are covered with oil. So those ovens have oil on them and it's not cooking oil either. So you have to scrub that out with soap and water and get all that off before you ever season it. Let it air dry. And then you can begin the seasoning process, which means you're going to wipe it down with vegetable oil and put it in the oven. And I choose not to use the oven in the house because I like to maintain a good relationship with my wife. <laughs> so I use the barbecue, the barbecue grill outside, which is by far the easiest way to do this. It keeps everything outside. You can keep the temperature maintained. Keep it around 375 degrees. Bake it for, for an hour. Take it off. Let it cool. Season it again, and when you season it with that oil, make sure you cover every nook and cranny on that oven. Put it back in the oven for uh, another hour, take it out, let it cool, and the final seasoning you will not bake on there. Some people will do three seasonings in the oven, and then one out. Two seasonings will generally get you started, because over time you will continue to season that oven. Once it's seasoned, you're ready to start cooking. Now, something I didn't mention to the previous uh, class that is with a brand new oven that's been seasoned, there's two things you don't want to start right off cooking. Things that are high acidic, which would be tomatoes. Stay away from the tomato sauce with that first initial seasoning. And stay away from cobblers that have lots of sugar in them. Because those will take that seasoning right off because it has not had a chance to really set in there. 
So after three or four cookings, and that seasoning is now very solid, then you can start cooking with acidic foods and with uh, foods that have a lot of sugar in them. So that's the seasoning process. Once you begin to cook, you obviously have to heat up some charcoal. Now charcoal is a, is a great, very inexpensive heat source. It takes about one and a half to two pounds of charcoal to prepare a meal. So if you look at two meals a day in which you would need heat, over the course of a year, you would need approximately 1,100 pounds of charcoal. Now, if you're doing a lot of meal at the same time, meaning many ovens at the same time, you're going to even need more charcoal than that. Now, a lot of folks would say, I don't want charcoal to be my primary fuel source. I'll have propane, I'll have wood, I'll have lots of different things, so you wouldn't need 10 garbage cans sitting around at the back of your house. But if you choose to do that, storing uh, charcoal in a garbage can is a great way to do it. Pick a garbage can up, 32 gallons, line it with a nice 50 gallon garbage can liner that you can keep it uh, away from the elements. Put your big bag of Kingsford charcoal inside, and then you can dump loose charcoal around the outside to fill this thing up to about 110 pounds. Now, when it comes to buying charcoal, I highly recommend Kingsford and not the house brands. A lot of folks will go out and invest a lot of money in storing house brand charcoal. House brand charcoal is terrible. It burns inconsistently, you have inconsistent sizes, and so you have charcoals that don't burn, charcoals that burn too fast, and it makes it tough to cook. So the little investment in the Kingsford, I think, is worth it. It will store a lot better. So you can store that and keep it away from the elements all year long. Sealed up with the garbage can liner, it's easy to use. Now when you light your charcoal, obviously something very handy to have is a chimney. And this is a larger chimney. They uh, sell these at Lowe's. And I typically use this one rather than my small one because I'm using multiple ovens. So an investment in a good chimney is nice because, again, you don't have to rely on another fuel source to start this. You can use newspaper to start the charcoal. The fireplace tools I have here, pick that I picked up at a yard sale were to help me when I don't have lighter fluid. Meaning if I light this with paper, sometimes it's hard to get those bottom charcoal started. But with this bellows, once a, a charcoal gets started, I give it a little bit of air, flares up in no time, and I've got a, a chimney full of charcoals that are ready to go. Distributing your, your charcoal around your stove, there are several methods that people will use for maintaining temperature. An oven you typically bake at 350 degrees. So maintaining your oven at 350 degrees is the real challenge. Some folks prefer the rule of threes, which is you take the size of the Dutch oven, 14 inches here, 12 inches here, and you add three charcoal to the top you take three charcoal away from the bottom. So you'd have 17 on top for a 14 oven, 11 on the bottom for a 14 inch oven. The problem I have sometimes in doing that is the charcoal will burn down and that piece of charcoal does not have the same heat value as a full size charcoal. So if I use the rule of three on top of my lid and underneath and the wind is blowing as it sometimes does around here, uh, it's hard to maintain that temperature. So a real easy way is the ring method. And the ring method, you line up your charcoals touching one another on the top and between the legs on the bottom. And all you have to do is look for when a charcoal burns down. And when, this, say, this charcoal's now burned down, I replace that charcoal. And I just maintain the ring on the top and bottom in order to maintain that 350 degrees. Now on the page that I, I'll give you here, there is, there are some instructions. Well, you got the page there? Well, you got it? Okay, good. We've got the, um, the uh, instructions for how to simmer food and how to uh, uh, bake. And so it's, main, it's important to maintain that temperature. When it comes to things on which you can use your Dutch oven, a lot of folks don't have a Dutch oven table like this, which is very handy to have because then you can stay standing up rather than bending down. You can buy some bricks, put them down on the ground and keep it up off the, the grass so you're not burning your grass or cracking your patio. 
very convenient way to do that. Years ago, I used to have a, a piece of sheet metal that I picked up from a construction site that I would use underneath Dutch ovens. But the one takeaway that I would share with you today, as you may have heard me tell the previous group, is the metal garbage can. The metal garbage can affords us the opportunity to cook Dutch oven 365 days out of the year. Because we can protect it from the elements, we can protect it from the cold, we can protect it from the wind, and even using it in normal conditions, you will use less charcoal because you don't have that airflow going through and burning up the charcoal. So this is one piece of equipment we have in our emergency supply that we consider to be of great value if we have to use any source of cooking. Yes, ma'am. So when you use the garbage can with uh -huh. the holes in for ventilation, mm -hmm. okay, and you've got your uh, your Dutch oven has a little feet on it, uh -huh. so you can set it right directly down on on the bottom of the garbage can. Yes. Uh huh. And if you didn't have little feet on it, then would you put the bricks down there? No, you, you could, well, if you don't have feet on your Dutch oven, yeah. if, the problem is is you have to put it on coals. And so if you put your Dutch oven on, directly on the coals when you don't have feet, is the Dutch oven it settles, it gets too hot. It mm -hmm. gets too hot and then it settles and tilts and so. Get feet on. Get feet, get feet is the best way. But I have a Dutch oven that doesn't have feet and what I have are some small bricks that I'll space around that I set it on and I put the coals so the underneath. Coals underneath. Yep because you want to maintain that distance underneath. Uh, other implements for handling charcoal in hot conditions, obviously a good pair of, of fireplace gloves, barbecue gloves. You can find these in most of the stores during the summer when barbecue grills are out. Uh, welder's gloves work really well. A lid lifter, you can use pliers to lift your lid, but a good lift, lid lifter works. And then obviously some tongs to handle your coals. The nice thing about a lot of Dutch oven tools and implements, they're very inexpensive to acquire because you can buy a lot of this stuff at the dollar store. Uh, my bucket cover here, I didn't buy at the dollar store, but a lot of the stuff inside came from the dollar store. You can buy these bucket covers uh, at some of the hardware stores, and they're very handy to have. And you can keep all of the tools you need to support your Dutch oven, including your lid trivet. And there's different ways you can find things to set your lid down on, and folks will come up with some very creative ways to handle that. Other little implements that help in the cooking process is that when you bake, you don't want to set your baking tins directly on the bottom of your Dutch oven. It becomes too hot, so to take it up off the bottom rather than buy some of the trivets they have out there, just roll up some aluminum foil and put it on the bottom. You can put your loaf pans and your uh, baking pans on the bottom setting out on the aluminum foil. Any questions about seasoning, preparing your charcoal, maintaining the temperature? Yes, Mary. So if you buy the ones that are seasoned, you really just use them? You can, some people use them right like that. The seasoning on them is not as durable as the one you would do yourself. So you would recommend seasoning it yourself? I, I like seasoning myself. Now, a word, of, a word to the wise on seasoning. After you've finished your Dutch oven, and this will go into the cleaning process and I'll get to this question on seasoning. When you clean a Dutch oven, you definitely don't want to use soap products on them. Soap will impregnate itself into the metal, into the seasoning, and it will come out in the flavor of the food. The other thing you don't want to do is to let water set in your Dutch ovens. I've known too many campers that have got the scrambled eggs stuck in the Dutch oven. They go off fishing all day long and come back, and now they've got a rusty oven. So you clean them while you're there. And things to clean them with, the best tool you can use is a scraper. You can buy these scrapers at Walmart. You can buy them at the cooking store. Uh, just a plastic scraper, very handy. A metal uh, pad to scrub out for some of the tough stuff. The scotch pads are very nice, but remember, the harder you scrub, you're going to take seasoning off. And I've seen people get in there, and especially if they tell the kids, go clean the Dutch oven, hand them a steel wool pad, and they come back, and you have this nice, bright Dutch oven that doesn't have a lick of seasoning on it. So you have to be careful with that. Now, the other thing is, is once you're finished cleaning that Dutch oven, you want it to dry well. So you want it to season, again, with a very light coat of oil, and let it air dry. If you put too much oil in your Dutch oven and you let it set, you'll come back and that's, that oil will peel off the seasoning. And so you have to start from scratch. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Oh, excuse me. 
on the chimney? How uh -huh. much coal do you put in there? What, what I will do, I burned a little extra today just to show different types of coal, but what I'll typically do is use heat up just what I need to start with and then do more as it's needed. Because if not, you waste a lot of charcoal. Again, it should take you for a 12-inch Dutch oven about a pound and a half to, to two pounds of charcoal only, which is about 20 briquettes. Okay, you have a question? On the Kingsford charcoal, you uh -huh. use the regular charcoal. Yes, don't use the... the Match light chart. Yeah. So, yep, and that's just a waste of money. The mesquite. You're not going to take advantage of the flavor. On the match light charcoal, the reason you don't want to use that is if you store that, it can spontaneously combust because it's impregnated with lighter fluid. And so you have to be very careful in using that.